started. This is Brian. He's Hi. our town IT director. He handles all of our technology needs. Bunch of tool walk normally involves. Yes. So. Um, and he just finished the, they just redid the town website and our website, so he's coming off a big project. But he's going to talk a little bit about the scary Thank parts you. of technology. And yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about cybersecurity today. Uh, so I've been hearing you guys chat about a lot of these things. Uh, today's topic is cybersecurity. Uh, I gave you that handout there, but basically, cybersecurity is our is the practice of uh, protecting against uh, the criminal or unauthorized access to any infrastructure, be it networks, emails, uh, or data in general. Uh, there is a lot of bad actors out there that are trying to get information anywhere they can and um, they like to, to prey on everybody it doesn't matter your age or your location or where you work their their job for them is getting data wherever they can get it um, so cybersecurity is really important for everybody it's not just for businesses it's not just for corporations it's for all of us as well You want to make sure in your digital life you can protect as much as possible and nowadays as we were just talking about the digital stuff is everywhere um, it's your phones it's your bank accounts it's you go shopping your receipts they're emailing them to you um, everything's email everything's digital so you want to to protect all that is is a lot of work um, so the way a lot of companies attack it is that there's kind of three guiding principles that they use, which first of all is the confidentiality. So that's protecting your data, keeping it secret, having your passwords, keeping them secret. Um, the next part is like the integrity. So if I can keep my data safe, you know the stuff coming from me is stuff you're expecting, right? It's not from... Um, Joe in somebody's basement trying to pull your data. If you're going to our website, gov.nh.gov, you see it has the .gov on it, you, that, that has integrity behind it because you know the .gov is a government site. The last piece is the availability piece, which once those first two items of confidentiality and integrity are established, you didn't have that, that availability reach. None of that first stuff matters if you can't get to it, right? So. If the power's out or the internet's down or there's some natural disaster and you can't get to any of those things, none of this stuff matters. So that's where a lot of your infrastructure is built out wirelessly now. So even if the power's down and your phone is still working, you can still get information there. Um, you can. I couldn't when we had power outage. On your cell phone? Yeah, on your cell phone. You should be able to, unless the tower's going down, so it, it depends on how broad the power outage is, right? So if the towers go down that your cell phone feeds off of, then oh, yeah, you won't be able to get stuff. That's it, yeah. But mm -hmm. Or if you're connected to your wireless at home or, you know, some other things like that, you may not be able to get that data. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was at home. It was on my home. Now I put in the generator. Yep, so even that if... That clicks in. So if, the gen so if a generator kicks in, yeah. your house has power, but that doesn't mean that your internet box has power or where your internet is served from has power. There's a lot of, um, depending on what your internet provider is, Infinity, they may have, yeah. they may have, so Infinity, a lot of oh, their stuff is, Verizon. either way, a lot of those places have substations and other locations that if they're out of power or if the power's mm -hmm. out because a wire came down, yeah. it's a possibility mm -hmm. that that Comcast wire came down too and has a mm -hmm. break. Well, I've had battles so. with Comcast, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different things that play into that availability piece. Yeah. Um, it's like, and you know hopefully, I like, oh, I must say is like, excuse me. I like is Eversource now has their own app where they notify you yep. how long your power outage is going to be. Yeah, they had a, an ad on TV that uh, if the power went out, they had four hours of backup. Yep. Yeah, it could it know. could be. It depends what they have at their facilities, and that might be their main facility has that, but their little node over here doesn't. It's oh. It's all how they're building up their infrastructure, which is built into their costs. But so that that kind of so that kind of goes into some key terms that we need to know. So 
network. Network is anything that um, your data is traveling across. It can be your home network. It can be Comcast network. It can be the network above Comcast where everything travels throughout the world, right? So we can't communicate to other locations around the country if stuff is severed in certain spots. Mm -hmm. So that's our, our network. Um, a, each device on a network has an IP address. So even if you're on Verizon network, your phone will get an IP address. Your home computer has an IP address. That's how everything communicates across the web. So if your phone or device can't get that IP address, it's not going to communicate to anything. So in your instance where you weren't able to connect to the internet, maybe their servers were down and you weren't getting the IP address that you needed so you couldn't get out. Um, along with IP addresses, the next piece is DNS. So, um, DNS is uh, domain name systems. And what that is, is like your, like I was talking about earlier, gossownh.gov, that's a domain. But that domain address is tied to an IP. So everything goes back to IPs. The domains make it easier for us to remember where we need to go. So if you need to go to youtube.com, you're not remembering that it's whatever IP address you're remembering it's youtube.com. So that translates to that. Um, other uh, things that we're gonna talk about today are, are hackers or bad actors, typically black hat hackers. There's a difference, there's white hat, black hat. Um, black hat are the bad guys, white hat are the good guys. Um, and bad actors, bad actors. They're the ones that are trying to steal your data. Um, How can you tell? Normally the White Hats are working with an organization to preempt any attacks. So their job is to find the loopholes before the bad guys. One time I got an email from Best Buy and <laughs> I had been hacked twice. So I didn't want to open it. I went to Best Buy and they told me that was a scam. How yeah. can I tell by just... Ooh, we're going to get into that, but um, it's tough. It's tough with emails and we'll get into that in a couple seconds here, actually. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I want to talk about is authentication, which is authentication is how you log into a website, like a Best Buy, um, like your email. That's going to be username, password, typically. That's that's the process of authenticating with that service. And the last piece uh, that we'll I'll kind of cover is a breach. A breach is something that happens when a hacker gets or a bad actor gets into some corporation system, gets in there, grabs a bunch of data, and then they pull it out. Um, unfortunately, that happens more often than any of us know. Uh, obviously, some of the bigger ones get published, but not all of them. Yeah, um, I get uh, my account. If anybody uses more rain and stuff, uh, you know, in, in that bill, they were hacked. Yeah. Okay, and we got the warning, and we had to. We got some company that more, they hired some company for a year yep. to protect us. Yeah. yeah, there's various companies out there that will do identity protection and that after after a breach. Yeah. Um, so now that we've kind of covered some of those, we're going to some of the types of cyber threats that are out there in the world. Um, one that you guys uh, are probably familiar with is malware, which is bad software. That's not as common anymore, but it's still out there where you'll go to a site, you'll click on a link, it'll download something or to your computer, and then it's in your system. Uh, it's basically malicious software that's designed to pull your data. Now it may log your keystrokes, it may just lock the data on your system, and there's different various variations of that spyware um, malware. The goal of that is just to get into your system, take the data out, lock you out of your system, basically disrupts your, your life because it's locking down all that stuff. Okay. If, if you get something that says your computer is locked, do not turn it off and all that stuff, I didn't do any of that. I called my son, he says, mom, it's a scam. Just turn it off and wait. And then, because it was, it wouldn't, no yeah. matter what I did, it wouldn't do anything. So there's some truth to that. What it sounds like happened in your case is you went to a website and a page popped up and filled your whole screen. Yeah. Those are, that's more scareware because it hasn't really oh. done anything yet. Until if I you were to click them. 
Exactly, and that, that kind of goes into something we'll talk about called social engineering. So they're popping that up, you're calling them, and then you're gonna be talking to a guy. And he's gonna start kind of massaging the information to get you mm -hmm. to either pay them, grant you access to the system through another website, um, or steal some other sort of data like credit cards or other information. Yeah, I got a call yesterday. Uh, he wanted a new program for new cards being issued by Medicare. And yep. He wanted my current Medicare oh, number. Sure. Oh, yes. yep. Isn't there a three key thing to get out of that? The control windows? Uh, there's a couple different keys you can hit. Um, Alt F4 will close any window that you're Alt in. Alt F. Alt, A-L-T, with the button bottom yeah. left yeah. next to the space bar, and then F4, which is across the top. That should close any window. Um, sometimes escape will work. Depends. Oh, I'm sorry, F what? F4. It's oh, okay. top of the keyboard. Yeah. Top of the keyboard. Or escape. On, on a computer. Alt yeah. F4. Yeah. Um, okay. So, malware. going back to malware, that's bad stuff. We don't want it. Uh, don't download things that you shouldn't be downloading. Uh, the other piece, which you guys have alluded to already, is uh, phishing. Um, anyone that has an email has received a phishing email, unless you just created it yesterday and haven't submitted it anyway. <laughs> um, it's getting worse as time goes on because mm -hmm. your email is out to more and more people. Um, you've used it at more and more sites. Those sites have either been breached or someone's leaked data or whatever else, or you've put an email into a site that's questionable. Uh, it happens. Everybody does it. We have people in town that have got caught by phishing emails as well. Um, Is it a good thing to have two emails, one for whatever and one for good? Yes and no. Um, yeah, I use, I have probably... No, I don't Half mind. a dozen emails for different things. I have a work email. I have a personal email. I have an uh, email for I coach sports. I use that for all my coaching stuff so that it's just limited to that stuff. Now, do you need all that? No. Uh, the newer emails are giving you the ability to tag emails, which allows you to say, like, if email comes from this sender, put it into this folder and that kind of stuff. So it's getting a little more... Uh, Organized. Organized um, for you. There's some process to getting it there. But with the phishing emails, it's really tricky, right? Uh, back uh, five, six years ago even, you're getting emails from princes and kings and queens that want to give you tons of gold and money and all that stuff. Well, those are still out there, but they're now getting really sophisticated because what they're doing is they're copying your citizen's bank email and making you think it's that, copying Microsoft emails, making you think it's that. So now it's really tricky to kind of identify what emails are good, which ones are bad. Mm -hmm. um, so one trick there is before you click on anything, kind of sit down and say, are you, are, am I expecting this email? Is, it, is, it, is this email making it sound like I need to do something now? Because typically those organizations aren't going to say like, hey, you need to click on this link now or you're, we're wiping mm -hmm. your account out. Really, that's not the way the banks work, right? They'll send you an email, maybe. They'll send you a notice in the mail. Maybe they'll try to call you. There's other stuff that they'll do. Um, so and then, when they, excuse me, and then when they do call you, they're verifying your date of birth, your social security, yeah. and you got to know who, that you're actually talking to Citizens right. Bank or a bank, whatever. Or I always you know, ask them give about that information. Yeah. Yep, that's a good way to do it. But with those emails, too, what you can do is if, if you have your browser open like you talked about, it's a little harder on a phone. But if you hover over the link with the cursor, normally it'll pop up and it'll show you across the bottom like where it's sending you. So mm -hmm. if you look at to where it's sending you and it's some weird website, mm -hmm. it's probably not a good email. So by clicking on the thing that Hover. says header. Yep, header. That it helps will too. give yep. you where it's coming from. But I, I can't well, that's tell who if that's a good and that's yeah and thing with, or not. There's so many, uh, we could talk phishing all day because there's mm -hmm. so many different aspects of it. Um, but with with going over that header, you're right. It may say it's from Caroline from the library. It may say Caroline library. But then you look at the email and it may be like 
uh, joey at yahoo.com. Or a whole no bunch or of numbers. A whole bunch of numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's one way they can spoof it is by spoofing just the name and then it's just another email. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's very difficult unless you know what you're looking for. I, I helped um, Patty downstairs last week look at one. It looks real mm -hmm. until you hover over one of the links in there and it's sending you to mm -hmm. who knows where. And it's like, I, I wouldn't click on it. I don't trust it. Mm -hmm. So to your point about taking the phone calls or whatever else, if you're not expecting an email, don't click on anything. Mm -hmm. That's the safest way to go. Mm -hmm. If it is from your bank, you can call them directly by the number you know, not the number that's in the email, right? Because mm -hmm. that number in that email may be a fictitious email to a bad actor that's going to try to solicit you for information about yourself so that mm -hmm. they can create their own accounts or do whatever malicious activity they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, so that kind of brings us into the social engineering piece. That's where you receive phone calls or you might get text messages. Mm -hmm. They're trying to reach out to you because they see stuff on social media or they pulled your data from here or there. And then now they can kind of create a rapport with you when they call up and they're like, hey, saw that you uh, joined this committee and was wondering, uh, you know, we're trying to set this stuff up and we need this information from you. Mm -hmm. That's where they're starting to try to pull more information from you so that they can maybe see what other accounts you're at and they're anywhere else that you might be. You know, I signed up for Geek Squad. Yep. It cost yeah. quite a bit of money. Oh, yeah. Okay, and... Uh, so I called them up about something. I've forgotten what it was. Okay, the first one is Juan from Panama. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was a lousy answer. It didn't work. Okay, so I call again, and Veneta or something like that from Pakistan. Okay, and then mm -hmm. she didn't know much. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the last one called was Abdul, but I didn't ask where he was from. But he knew how to fix my problem. He yeah. walked me through it. Oh, well, when have, you call Best Buy to, for the geek? Yes. A lot of them have call centers that are anywhere in the world. Yeah, they have foreigners working yeah, for every company so in the world now. They can right. yeah. now yeah. understand what they're saying to you. Exactly. But yeah. I, I want the information. I want to know uh, what was the, what what I was looking for. Or how do I get yeah. it? Yeah, what well, was screwing up my printer? That was the issue. How do I know that Abdul knew his stuff, but the other two didn't? Yeah, I don't know. Good luck. That's that's a tough one. That's, I don't yeah. trust anybody. I just drive there. I mean, well, you, he, he, I trust. Do we trust the? If clients? you're make, and that's what I was gonna say. If you're making the call to Best Buy, if you're yeah. using their number, calling their service. Yeah. You're getting people that are employed by them. So they have a duty. This goes back to the integrity piece, right? Like they have a duty to make sure that the number you're calling is protected, the people that are working for you or for them are protected, and then the work that they're doing for you is legit work. Because that would if be it's like not, Comcast. then they start to lose that integrity. That would be like a Comcast or yeah, a doctor. Any of those companies. If you're calling Comcast, if you're calling Citizens, if you're calling Best Buy, you're calling those people. They're not calling you. Now, if Abdul calls you out of the blue saying, hey, so I see there's a virus on your computer. I'd like to get in and fix it for you. That's where you might want to start raising some red flags because, mm. one, have you been using your computer? Is your computer re on? How does he know you have a computer? Because uh, that's another scam out there. They'll call and say they're from Microsoft and they got this alert. Microsoft's not going to call you. No offense. They don't care about your antivirus. Mm -hmm. You know, they got a bunch of other stuff going on that they're not going to start calling individual people saying like, hey, you got a virus, let me fix it for you. If that, your computer is off, can they still get into it? If your computer's off, powered off, no. Okay. Yeah, but what can happen, like my income tax people got... Uh, but their computer, their computer must be on all the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have, probably have servers and stuff that are on all the time. They probably yeah. store stuff in the cloud, like... And we'll get into some password stuff in a little bit, but that's that's where <clears throat> some other securities come into play. Um, you've talked, we've talked about kind of different devices, phones, desktops, tablets, laptops. One of the most important things with cybersecurity too is a lot of these bad actors out there are looking at vulnerabilities in these devices for ways through to get to your data. So you'll see a lot of times, and it's obnoxious, I'll say it as well, you'll get update for the phone, you'll get Windows updates, you'll get security mm -hmm. updates. 
everything's updated all the time. Well, the reason why they're doing that now is so that they can secure it. They found a loop, somebody found a loophole or some kind of security breach, and they're trying to patch that so that their system is secure. And unfortunately, as we talked earlier, uh, technology is changing so fast that they're do they used to do it on like a regular once a month cycle. Well, they, everyone knew that they're on a one month cycle, so they were would hammer it right after that day that update came out until the next update and try to figure out what they can do, what they can break. Um, mm -hmm. So th that's why it's very important to keep your devices up to date. If you if you get a thing that says it's been updated, download this or whatever, you know, then do you trust that or hmm. yeah because my it's, phone i i don't think i've updated it since i've gotten it two years ago because i phone, don't trust like a, it yeah if there's i don't trust it <laughs> at some point they'll if it's from verizon and normally you can tell pretty easily it's from verizon um or whenever well, the carriers are t-mobile yeah i mean it should pop up saying this you know i have the t-mobile logo we're updated for security enhancements it'll tell you it should tell you like this is the the sheet on what we're updating and you can always go and look and see what they're they're updating but they're typically updated for security reasons now mm -hmm. do some of the updates slow stuff down and everything else eventually yeah because you're stacking update upon update upon update upon update mm -hmm. it's it's turns into a pile of matchsticks right so i um, heard that apple had some sort of security that you shouldn't get any spam on an Apple product. Spam you don't get viruses. Tip. Viruses may maybe they have um, most operating systems. When you talk about this, um, Windows, Apple, Chrome, they have built-in antivirus. Mm -hmm. Antivirus is good. It's still there. That's what's going to stop your malware and your spyware and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and with the way the technologies are going, it's getting better and better. Mm -hmm. um, so that yeah, I mean they're not lying. They have stuff in there that'll stop that, but it's, it's not. not gonna, it's best. not. It's not going to stop spam in your email. I mean, mm -hmm. emails, email. That's mm -hmm. they might have a. Um, as more and more email traverses the internet, like they may have technology in place that's saying, okay, we've seen a lot of these go out to all these mailboxes. That's spam. You're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. It has different AI. It started to use artificial intelligence to scan the emails quickly and go, no, nope, this is junk. Or it's looking for keywords like Prince of Nigeria. Okay, no, that's junk. Yeah. We're going to send it over there. No, it, it's interesting. The one I got from the Secretary of State's office went into junk. Yeah. And that was where uh, it and went. I, and I wasn't aware that was where it was. So I spent like three weeks trying to find out. You know, I'm waiting for this email. And there's so many different reasons why it can end up in the junk because all these detection systems are looking for keywords. They're looking at the subject. They're looking at links that are in the emails, and then they're going to those links and scanning those links to make sure those websites aren't compromised. There's lots of different security that's in email. Unfortunately, that's changing just as quick as the bad stuff's changing. So they're, they're able to figure yeah. that out. But yeah, the detection of spam, phishing, it's getting better. That just means the the attackers are going to change, which is why we talk about social engineering, because that's just one other way for them to get your information. They're just going to call you and ask for it. And see if they, they break in the Secretary of State's office, they can get a whole lot of yeah. data. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. and one of the um, there's sites out there. One of them I have listed here. You can put your email address in. It'll tell you every site that your email's been breached at. So oh. it's a good. Um, it's a good resource to have because you can put it in and you'll see like, oh, so I use my email for that company. They got breached in, you know, 2018. This, and it'll even tell you what information they got that is public. So it'll say like they got phone numbers and last four credit cards. It'll tell you that right there, mm -hmm. um, which you can't do much with the last four of the credit cards. But if you social engineer through that and you call the per like, Social engineering is using that data just as much as we are to protect ourselves because they're looking at it saying, okay, so um, Target got breached. They have uh, customer names, email addresses, last four of credit card. Okay, well, now I know that Brian Ray is a customer at Target. He used a credit card with the last four. This is his email address. 
Okay, let's see if we can find his email address out there. Oh, look, his email address is here. It has his number. Let me call Brian. Hey, Brian, this is Target. Uh, we know we had the breach. Da da da. da. Uh, can you give? If you give me this information, we can reopen your account. And it's like, okay, that that's how they're trying to do stuff. Mm. Must be nice yeah. to be smart. <laughs> There's smarter really people than out than me out there. To so. really get so sail it in a better direction. Hackers. We're trying. We're trying. There's lots of initiatives out there to knock a lot of this down. And, uh, it's so when slow, you but. when you get an email that says your computer is not protected, uh, you know, it could click be, here yeah. and uh, it's like it's tough to say okay, if it's malicious it really or it's marketing. Or, it could yeah. be marketing too. It could just I be an antivirus vendor saying like, hey. The computer might not be as protected as you want. We offer this application. I guess my point is, anything you get in an email, kind of be wary of it. Even if it's from somebody you know, if it's asking you to do something or go to something, question it. Well, I keep thinking, well, I don't even think I ever had that protect that kind of protection. Well, you may not. She so. was saying earlier that when you get an email and you unsubscribe, they know that there's somebody there. Yep. What would you Some do if you have an email and you don't want it anymore? Move it to your junk folder. <clears throat> um, some emails, um, some email companies will allow you to block that sender. Yeah, well, you can it, put it in a block. You, you have it in the unsubscribe. The, the unsubscribe is, if it is a reputable company, an, un, an unsubscribe will work. If it's Unsolicited marketing, if it's phishing. It was the unsubs Trump campaign. Unsubscribe, <laughs> unsubscribe may add you to another list. It may. I don't know. I haven't gotten any more. I, they, yeah. I noticed so there was some in my junk folder. Yeah. yeah. Like so it depends on the company because to, to the point that was earlier, right? Once you hit unsubscribe, it normally pulls you to a website that says put the email address in that you want to unsubscribe. Yeah. You put your email address in, and now they have your email address. Right. So now they know you're a real person. That's a real email address. Thank you for confirming. We're now going to sell it to 40 more companies. Well, and I think the, the way that I ended up with that email coming almost daily, and I used to just delete, 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 yeah. delete. And I said, well, if I unsubscribe to some of these, I won't have as many emails in there every day. <laughs> and what it is, is I had gone into like Etsy or something yeah. to see something and I wanted more information, so I clicked on something, and it's like then they have they have me. That's why I created a second email. Oh. Which is fine as long as you protect that <coughs> one and you don't use it anywhere, and then it's good. But if you start using it for any online ordering or anything else, you risk being right back in the same boat. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing to have your credit card already on the computer, like, you know, with some people that automatically pay? E mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's, do I have my credit card saved in a system? Yes, but it's not saved in the browser. It's saved in a secure vault, essentially. You can get applications. There's applications out there that you can put passwords in. Um, credit cards, other vital information. Um, there's um, trying to think of the ones that mm. we use. It's like Bitwarden is one. Mm. There's a bunch of different password managers out there that you can store stuff in. I'll give you my email address. Storing <laughs> your credentials, your, your authentication, your username, your password, or credit cards in your browser is a risk. You can do it. But there has been methods where these bad actors will be able to pull the store from your browser and then decrypt that and grab that information mm -hmm. if they get the right software on the computer. So, so even though it's not an automatic pay thing where, let's say every month I go in to discover, yep. I go in, put in my password, make my payment. Yep. And then I'm out of there. You put your password in each time? You don't save yes. your password? Perfect. No, I don't save my password. Perfect. That's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I save them in a little book that I have so we'll, we'll get written that off on too, the right? side. So um, passwords are probably the most important thing with anything in cybersecurity. You have to have good passwords. So having that 
having a password that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably not the best password because it's probably the first thing they're gonna try. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to have good passwords. Now that doesn't mean that passwords have to be super complicated that you can't remember. But what people are pushing now is more passphrases. They tend to be a little bit longer. Uh, but one thing to remember too is you can use spaces in a password. So you could put a sentence in there or mm -hmm. put your four favorite items separated by a space with a, a number at the end. Now those get longer, but one of the other links I have on there under resources is Hive.io, and they have a password hash table on their website that shows you how long it takes to break a password based on complexity and length. Some of those passwords, I want to say up to 12 characters now, can be broken pretty quickly. Like How many passwords do you have? Mine's like 16. How do you remember them all? Oh, you're young, mine, that's right. Mine changes every six months, too. Oh, yeah, good. some companies, that's good yeah. to ask you to change it off. Yeah, yeah I get my the military pay every 90 days. I've got it. So one lady said she put it in pencil. Yeah. If you, you, you know, if you write it down, you fill up your password book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's diff definitely different methods on how to make secure passwords. Passphrases is what I'm recommending people use now. It just tends to be a little bit longer, but um, it's more secure. Um, I'll put, don't call Matthew because he's just going to tell you to Google it. <laughs> yeah, so pa passphrases are good. And like I said, there's password managers out there. Uh, it sounds like most of your password managers are a nice little handy book by your side, which is fine until you forget it somewhere or leave it somewhere, and then everyone has all your passwords. I was now, so most smart, I left it on my screen. <laughs> that works. Until, <laughs> in a home setting, not as bad. In a corporate setting, you probably don't want to put it there because then everybody has your password. But okay. I'll, I'll let the home setting go for now. Um, as, long as, you, as long as you trust everybody in your house. Yeah. Uh, you so, do your online banking at home. Yeah. Well, it's don't be you got to do it other places. Yeah, when there are scams, the first place they look at the relatives. That's yeah. the, it, it is your family that done. Yep. A friend of mine, his son, wiped out his credit. Yeah. The password manager, oh, is there one in particular that you would suggest? They don't, you can't uh, I don't want to suggest Sad. just one. I mean, there's different ones out there. There's uh, Bitwarden password one, two, three, I think is another one. The only reason Bitwarden, off the top of my head, is somebody was just recently talking about it. Uh, but there's a lot of, if you look up pa uh, password managers, there's several out there. Um, okay. How do they work? You know, I've got yep, more sure. of passwords. So, yeah, uh, how a password manager works is basically it's, it's a vault. So you'll create a master password to that vault. And then it will store all your pass. You'll go in, you'll put your username, your password for all of your accounts, and it stores those encrypted. So you'll be able to access those wherever you log in as long as you have that major, that master password, which has a pretty, um, it's got to be a tough password. It's got to be fairly long, but mm -hmm. it'll So do you have like an icon for the password vault or something? Different ones actively. Some are more like an application. Some are an app on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be what's, kind of what's your favorite password manager? Favorite one? I don't know if I have a favorite one yet. Uh, I've used a couple. Right now I'm on Bitboard, which is partly why I'm remembering that one and not any of the other ones. Yeah. But it's a lot of work to set that yeah, up. The B-I-T. B-I-T. Yeah, I mean, you're talking I B-I-T, W-A-R, D-E-N. I'm managing thousands of passwords. So as good as my memory is, I tend to forget a couple. So. <laughs> Yeah, it would be nice to just have to remember one. So, yeah. Yep, and that's what that allows you to do. It allows you to remember that one. And again, same thing there. You should change that one on a regular basis because uh, it can, if somebody gets that one, gets your username, downloads the app, theoretically they shouldn't be able to get in, but it's possible. But, excuse me, do you pay for that? Uh, there is pay services, but I think there's some free ones out there too. Bitwarden has a free version. I don't know what, um, I don't know what it gives you. It doesn't give you with the free version. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but yeah, 
Uh, the version I have is paid for, but it's a corporate one, so it's spread out. Through oh. You don't use that for your personal use as well, then? I do use it for my personal use as well. I use, oh. yeah. Okay. And I don't know, I just haven't got into the difference between yeah. the two. Okay. I want to say to you, like, the thing about texting is you're getting a lot of um, scam, and you can, when you delete them and block them, is that blocked forever from that um, site? For I, texting? Yeah. For like, text. so you get a text message, some random... Yeah. It's, yep, SMS text. Yeah, if you block those, it depends on your carrier. Depends on... Yeah, because people you are asking, like, forever. friends are asking me, how do I block... And I'm like, well, I know how to do it on my phone, but we all yeah. have different phones, so it all works yep. differently. You know, yeah, I'm it trying... depends on the carrier because some carriers may block it for 90 days, some may block it for 180 days, some may block it indefinitely. I, it's hard to answer that one, not knowing the carriers or whatever oh, okay. else. Okay, so it differs from uh, carrier to carrier. It, it it can, yeah, yep. There and different depends what you're using for a phone app because people can download different phone apps, different messaging apps. Um, like, I don't use the default messenger app, so if I block something, it might block different than Verizon's messaging app. Uh, so there's a lot of different different thresholds depending on which company. But I have a, my passwords on a list. Yeah. And I want to have an account with uh, this Bitwarden. Can I just send them my, my list, or do I have to go in and set up an account and... You would have to set up an account. Um, you would have to. It. You would have to enter some of them in. However, there is a feature where they put a browser plugin, so you can use it in Firefox or Edge or Chrome um, or um, whatever the other ones are for Apple. Um, so it puts a plugin, and you log into that plugin. The next time you log into that site, it'll ask you if you want to save that password to that to the vault. So you say yes, it saves your vault. Now the but next it time, doesn't say to your vault. vault. It just says, do you want to save your password? That's the that's the basic browser one. That that one I wouldn't recommend using because that's the one that can get compromised. Um, this is if she was using the Bitwarden with the browser plugin. So oh. Bitwarden has a browser. Plugin. So do many of the other ones. They have a browser plugin that you can use that'll help you store those items. That makes more sense. It's a it's it's more secure um, than saving it with just the browser. Because yes, the browser. Anytime you log into a website, it'll say, "Do you want to save this password with a g generic browser?" Um, that I, I don't recommend. No. no, I say no. Because it just stores it kind of mm -hmm. in a. Uh, cache there that people can then kind of steal. I won't get it the hell. So when it says do you want to save this if it's just the ID, is that no, is yeah, that hard to get sa into? Saving the username isn't as bad as saving the username and the password, okay, but it's still saving some of your authentication data. So now they have 50% oh. of your your authentication methods. Which will bring us into the next thing which um, I don't know if any of you are using, but if you are, it's great. Multi-factor authentication. Yes. So multi-factor is very good to use. Um, <laughs> it basically takes something you know, which is your username or your pass, uh, your username and your password, something you have, uh, which could be a, a, pin, a PIN number or a smart card, or uh, I use an authenticator app on my phone that rotates numbers through. So it'll ask for, so now when I log into certain sites, it'll ask for my username. It'll ask for my password, which those are things I know, and then it'll ask for my multi-factor, which is a number that scrolls through every 30 seconds on my phone to enter that in. So now, if somebody compromises your username and password, it doesn't matter unless they have that that rotating number. They could enter that password all day, but if they don't have that rotating number, they're never going to get in. The third part of authentication with MFA could be something you are your fingerprint, your face ID, uh, voice. There's different, that's a, like a, a third aspect of that. But Is that a, a six digit number that they yes. send yep. on your a lot, email? Of, a lot of times, so yes, you can get that six digit number. So I have an authenticator app. Sometimes it's sent as a text. Yeah. Sometimes they send it in an email. Mm -hmm. So that that's multi-factor and that's securing more accounts um, 
that's a better security for accounts because you need that number. Without that number, you can't get into the account. I hate it when I have to have my phone when the, my I, phone is over there. And I 100% you know. get it, but that security right there yes. for your yes. banks, for your credit cards, yes. Yes. for yes. almost yes. any of your accounts, yes. that means you're the only one that can get into it because you're waiting for that phone. Well, I'm on my computer doing this, and it comes in uh, on my iPhone. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then I have it, and I can, and I'm on the phone to a person telling me what to do. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. then you have to figure out how not to lose so that I person. Need, yeah. yeah I, I need a landline yeah. as well as a uh, cell phone line yeah. at my house. Yeah. yeah. The, the Having the MFA, having that number, uh, you'll see a lot more organizations are forcing that on you because yes. it's yes. making their infrastructure as a whole more secure. Yeah. Because if people, if now if their passwords get compromised, okay, change your password, but you're still protected by multi-factors, so nobody can get into your account anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, which, it sounds like most of you do, which is great. When it comes to your passwords too, you should be using different passwords for pretty much every account that you have. Oh, boy. You I should. Because I haven't changed mine in years. If Oof, <laughs> IT guy, don't tell me that. Yeah. Um, because if your account at Target gets compromised and you use the same password at Best Buy, well, you probably use the same email too, right? So they're going to be able to take your username and password, go over to Best Buy, and if your credit card's saved to your Best Buy account, they might start buying stuff and sending it somewhere. So that's why passwords, multi factor, all that is mm. really, really important when it comes to cybersecurity. Because it keeps. It keeps the bad guys out of the accounts, and the more we can do as users, it it definitely helps the infrastructure for all these corporations, but it also protects everybody. Because like you said earlier about family compromise, like yeah, if I get hacked, they might have, if they hack my email account or my target account, they might be able to get to other accounts because now they have a way in, and then they can start poking around the keeper, and they can get credit cards, and then they can find another account that you're attached to. And then eventually they get to your work account or something like that, and you're using the same password to get into there, and then they start taking data or whatever else. It's mm. it's a big ball of mess when that's you get into right. cybersecurity. That's why my husband right. said that it is work. He has to um, change his password, I think, I don't know, it's every three or four weeks because he does, the company works for it does covered contract work. Yep, yeah, sounds about right. I think uh, for some of our uh, state stuff, it's on a 90 day password cycle, so we're changing our password every quarter. Yeah. Yeah, when I worked for the county, they asked you to change it. When I worked for UPS, we had to change it every month. Yep. My yeah. military retirement pay comes, so I have to change that every 90 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the standard right now is 90 days. But I, I, but I didn't um, write it in pencil the first time. <laughs> okay, and now I've discovered that it's taking up more than room in my yeah. book than it should. <laughs> Well, I so think you'll I see down put, the road. Can I put it in pencil? So far, that's worked. I, I'm I'm hoping as we go down the road, as technology gets better, you're gonna see those the change password windows kind of get longer because now once we start getting multi-factor across every platform, the password and the password's longer. Like if I make the password 16 characters and I have multi-factor, I don't need to change that. It's not. No, it's not going to get cracked for a long time. four years, five years. Plus, I have the multi-factor ID that it's sending to me, so they would have to spend four years of time and guess what that six-digit number is going to be. We'll, I think we'll start to see those. As people create better passwords, as we have multi-factor, I think that the IT world is going to say, okay, yeah, we can stretch that 90 days to a, a year. So but the years. vault should help you with all of that, right? The yeah. vault will, yes. And depending mm -hmm. on the vault you go with, sometimes they have password generators, which will be able to generate a longer password for you, store it, and you're good. Okay. I'm finding a lot of times I can't use a six-digit password nope. anymore. You cannot. That can they be broken. They want eight, in and they want different characters and capitals. And even, even eight is, I think. You'll start seeing 12 pretty quickly on most places, okay. um, which is why you'll start seeing people go to multi-factor for most of their platforms because then maybe they set it to 10 in 180 days and multi-factor and then you're good. I was again, that multi-factor I didn't have my phone. 
was really stuck. Well, and that's that's where we're trending, right? Like without your phone now, because it has your authenticator or your it's getting your six digit, you gotta log in somewhere. Pretend it's your have... baby and put it on your hip. <laughs> I've, no, I've had I've had to dr I've left my phone at home and I'm probably gonna leave my phone here later because I took it out of my pocket. But um, <laughs> yeah. I had to drive home one day because I left my phone at work. I couldn't log in because I needed that PIN number off my phone, which was at home. Oh, to log in to get into the where yeah. you work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When they send you that number. Yeah, exactly. To log in. I went to go log in. And I'm like, oh, oh, so. You so log carry in, your phone like guess I have a day. Guess I have a day <laughs> off. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No days off. Um, no, but a uh, good story. I lost my, uh, well, I was in the ladies' room at a museum in New Orleans. And I had to take a call, so I took out my iPhone. I left it there in the ladies' room. And I'm back at my hotel wanting to use my, uh, and I said, oh, oh God. God. I left it on the counter. Okay. Come, and all of a sudden I get a call. And someone at the museum had found my iPhone, called the last person that I had called, yeah. okay, and then called the hotel, because that's where my friend told her I was. And luckily I was there by the phone. And Thank God it was an honest person. I was going to say, good yeah, thing you had really, an honest person there. We I did yeah. that at Walmart. Somebody left their phone in the carriage. They said, oh, do you want this carriage? And I took it and I didn't look and I'm going and I went, then I heard the phone ring and I went, that's not my phone. And I looked and it was somebody's phone in the car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I don't remember, I think I called or I might've answered it yeah. and it was the woman's grandson. Yeah, who and was probably in the car with her or something. No, oh. he was home oh, geez. or wherever. And I said, um, I just answered this phone. It was in the card at Walmart. And then I brought it to the customer counter. And I don't know, we did some other stuff, yeah. but she did end up getting it. I think I'm going to get it's... one of those waterproof thing and put it on my neck. <laughs> I had an app that says, uh, where's my phone? Yep. And yeah. I, I used it to, when I first got I forgot I even had it till you mentioned this. And so I, I tried it out and it said, it's in your hand. <laughs> which it was. Oh, wow. But yeah. isn't that amazing, huh? But I think it has to be turned on, right? What's that, the phone? It, like an iPad, you're looking for your iPad and you're on your phone, you say, mm -hmm. where's yeah. my iPad? I think the iPad has yeah. to be on, Yeah, right? it has to be on, otherwise it's yeah. not going to get a signal. Just I mean, power, it has stuff. to have battery. I guess I'll put it that way. Yeah. So even though it's off, I still might be able to find yeah. it? Depends on the platform. Depends on I'm gonna get bigger depends what small. level sleep mode or power off mode it's in. I mean, yeah. my son lost well, lost his phone, and so when he realized he didn't have it, he went home and he called the company and canceled the phone. Mm -hmm. And he said, "I've lost my phone. I can't. I can't get it. You know, can you tell me where it is or whatever?" They said, "No, that account's been canceled." So because he. Canceled. canceled it so nobody yeah. could use his yeah. phone. Oh, yeah. He yeah, couldn't people find steal phones it. now. So, oh, I know. Yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> how but he had dropped things, it. Yeah. yeah. You know. I'm so yeah. glad I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> we never used is to be so BIT suspicious. W -R -D no. <laughs> B-I-T-W-A-R-D-E-N. Oh, A. Okay. Bit warden. Like the warden at the jail? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's all one. Yeah. Word. Oh, yeah, and that again, that's just one of them. I don't yeah, want you to sound like I'm promoting it or anything. That's just the one that we chose. Um, yeah. You'd I find that on the password manager, right? Password manager, okay. yeah. Oh, this is looking now. It says free. Yep. Oh, um, boy. It says so hackers. This... When I tried to go into it, it says hackers might be trying to steal your information. From... Secure it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, I covered. Pretty much everything I wanted to cover. You you guys have asked questions throughout, but you can ask me some more questions while I'm uh, here. Yeah, what's your telephone number in case? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that. I don't answer it. <laughs> oh, you don't want that. I can't answer any questions. He works with it now, but what's it? Unfortunately, Brian can't take any 
Patron oh. questions that we've worked with. You can come here and they can help you yes. out. If they get really She's stuck. She's really good. Um, they'll call you. Yeah. They get she really stuck, come in and give them some guidance well. on what they can do in the future and mm -hmm. go from there. Yeah. Um, if you if you get uh, either something in the mail or you get an email that says your account has been hacked and to call a number. Um, I had that, I had that, it was from the financial service thing that I had. They had sent me a letter and I, I actually called my financial advisor to see if it was, yeah. if it was real and they weren't sure, but then they called me back within 20 minutes and said, yeah, it is. I got an yep. email but saying Susan got hacked. I didn't do anything about it. So, so one of the things I, so in that, good on you for calling the institution without calling the number, because that's what I would recommend. Don't yeah. call any number you get. Again, if it's unsolicited, yeah. be wary of it. You don't know. So if it's your, your local TD bank or citizens, like call them, go there, say like, Hey, I got this. Is this, mm -hmm. is this legit? Now post uh, breach where your data has been stolen or whatever else, definitely look at what was taken, um, change your passwords for that institution, make sure you're not using that password anywhere else. Your um, user ID is okay to keep the same though, right? Well, a lot of times the user ID now is your email, so you're not going to be able to change that anyways. Right. Um, so that that's one thing you can't really change, but definitely change your passwords. And like, and like we just talked about, that multi-factor, once you enable that, that helps secure the account tremendously. Okay. I do I do H&R Block, and they oh. have this tax identity shield. Yep. And i gotten information for a long time, and lately I've been getting things. Um, we found your email on the dark web. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to um, make my appointment the other day, I said, well, what, you know, what does that mean? Do I need to contact somebody? Do I need to do something? They said, if you haven't had any other information other than that, right. don't worry about it. Pretty sure most of us in the room have their email on the dark web. It's just kind oh. of, it's, it means some account somewhere got compromised. They pulled it from a website. They pulled it from a, a, a company. Um, yeah, okay, email. Now, if it says your email and password have been compromised, okay, that's a bigger issue. But like mm -hmm. that, it's the website I put on there, it's I uh, Have I Been Pawned. That website, you go in, you put your email address in there, it will tell you where you've been breached. It'll tell you how you've been breached. So it, it's one more place. But your identity theft place is probably using a similar uh, algorithm to find that stuff. Can you repeat that, please? It's here, I can show you. It's right on the form. Oh. Uh, she, this is gold. Yeah, under resources, there's a two websites. This oh, yeah. one here is the one that you can put your email in. And sorry about uh, the font. I tried to fit a lot of information into a small piece of paper. If I but, have two email, will the yep. vault use my password for those two email or do I have to create two passwords? So you're not putting a password in at that site. You're just putting your email address in and you can put as many email addresses. You can check your, your son's email address if you want be like, hey, I found out that your email was hacked at this place. It would really mm -hmm. confuse them. If mm -hmm. I teach my son anything about IT <laughs> and I become the queen. <laughs> He's um, an IT guy. So, yeah, it means. So, dark my, web one of my doesn't brothers really is, mean anything. It just means my. Uh, I. Yeah, I, it it means something. It means your data at some point was compromised, but in our current society, having your email compromised isn't really surprising anymore. I mean, ten years ago, like, oh my god, my email got compromised. It's like, okay, but now. Which is why everyone gets more chunk email, more spam email, more. Well, I've had the Juno. There. I've had the more. Juno email oh, since ninety four. I was gonna say that one's wow. been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, you know, you so my mother in law's got an AOL one still. So it's like, oh yeah, Hi, can you completely delete an email address? Um, you there's a process to it, but yeah, you you is it pretty complicated to do? Um, I don't know if it's complicated. It just has some. Depends who you like, are. 
It, yeah. uh, you probably have a process to go through and there's probably some warnings and then there's probably like a 14 day rest period so you no. can <laughs> bring it back in case you change your mind. Like, yeah. Yeah, and we all have different emails that we like to look at. I'm an, I'm a person that likes Gmail. My husband is the person that likes the Comcast emails to read them and to un, you know and look at them. Yeah, we're all like it's a different yeah, platform. Gets, of looking they at. all have all the platforms have kind of a different layout. I mean, it's all yeah, right, similar, exactly. but it all reacts differently. Right, exactly. Um, I have the I guess, promote Citizen because I got hacked, and the only way that I knew Citizen called me, and they say, "Have you done this?" And I said, "No," and sure enough. Somebody had your account. Yeah, but Citizen called me before yep. I even knew. Yeah, uh, yeah. American yeah. Express. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They'll they'll call me. You know, I used to travel a lot, and they would call make sure. It yeah. was Are a, you traveling right now? Is there yeah. a charge in this location? Or yeah, because you can call your credit card company ahead of time if you're going on a trip and you're going to be spending thousands of dollars yeah. somewhere. Sure. Yeah. 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 Also, when I bought um, propane from uh, Irving, uh, they charged me twice. Because I don't know what I, they sent me two bills. Okay, I paid one, and I had assumed it was the same as the other one, so yeah. I signed off on it. And American Express went up and took care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and to your, you said that identity theft. There's a bunch of different identity theft websites out there too, which will track some of that dark web stuff, it'll track your credit stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like if someone tries to create yeah, an account, they, they, I, I have some identity yeah. theft stuff because. Um, some of our data got compromised, so it's been great because you get a notification saying like, "Hey, did you just open a Verizon account?" No, I have it. Yeah. So it will stop it dead right there. And you got to look at your bank accounts if you do your banking yeah. online I mean, frequently. Yeah. Because day, we got there's a lot of legwork to cybersecurity. Yeah. For protecting yourself. Yeah. To keeping your data safe.